the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise has led to some pretty interesting collaborations over the years. From countless fast food products, to soda partnerships, to band promotions, Sonic has had some pretty wild collaborations in the past. For the longest time, my personal pick for World's Strangest Sonic promotion had to have been the M-Flow Love Shadow the Hedgehog promo. I'm not sure how many people even remember this, and I won't delve into too much detail here as I could make an entirely separate video on just this, but it's some pretty great stuff. However, that collab may now be topped because in 2017, Sonic, Sonic Team, and Sega finally made a long-awaited collaboration with the restaurant chain Hooters. Yes, that Hooters, and yes, this is real. In this video, I'll be going over the complete history of this modern classic of a collaboration, going over its announcement, the promotion itself, and any other possible facts you might want to know regarding Sonic Forces X Hooters. I would hate to waste any time before diving right into this, so let's begin. Our story begins on September 22nd, 2017. On that day, a Sonic Forces Tokyo Game Show presentation is underway. The presentation itself was actually pretty great. I didn't watch it live myself, but it seemed to have a lot of great moments. They showed off a new trailer for the game, we had the Sonic mascot doing its thing throughout the whole event, and overall the presentation did its job well. The presentation's main goal was said to be an explanation of the appeal of Sonic Forces. It would also offer fans some exciting tidbits into its development, as well as some announcements of course. One thing I have to mention from this presentation was that there was a Sonic Forces concert that took place during it. It was pretty incredible to say the least. The two performers, along with a DJ, performed four tracks from the Sonic Forces OST. The first song they performed was Park Avenue. The second was a remix of White Jungle from Sonic Adventure 2, which served as a hint to the then-just-announced Episode Shadow DLC, as it would go on to be used for the stage Eggman's facility. The third song they performed was Guardian Rock. And finally, they ended it with, what else? Fist Bump. In fact, they actually sung a, at that point, unreleased verse of the song too, so that was cool. I'm a huge fan of the Sonic Forces OST, so while it was a little cheesy, this was great. I want to take a short detour from the presentation itself to talk about this statue that was on display at the Tokyo Game Show Sega booth where you could play Sonic Forces. This statue actually dates back to around the release of Sonic Adventure, which you could infer given the statue's design. In fact, if Sonic's pose seems a little odd to you, it's because this statue was actually once part of an even larger statue of Sonic riding on the back of the Tornado 2, which was being piloted by Tails. For whatever reason, Sonic was detached from the tornado and nowadays all that seems to be left is Sonic itself. Maybe it was a space issue? Not sure. But it is very cool to still see this guy being brought to events like this. As it turns out, Sonic was detached from the tornado piece a long time ago, as far back as 2004. This Sonic statue could actually be found in the lobby of Sega of Japan's headquarters. He spins around in place. That's quite the decorative piece. It's very odd that they would use a statue like this to promote forces, but hey, I'm not complaining. The style and design of this guy looks great. I just hope the tornado piece is still out there somewhere, and maybe one day the statue can be completed once again. 
Besides the concert, the main draw to the Tokyo Game Show presentation was, of course, the announcements. At first, they showed off various pieces of merch that would be available for purchase at Tokyo Game Show. After that, a demo for Forces was announced. But then, after that, Hooters x Sonic Forces came on screen, some Hooters girls came out on stage, and the rest was history. Imagine being at this presentation live, moments before you were jamming out to Park Avenue only to be hit right up with the announcement that Sonic Forces, Sonic the Hedgehog, would be collaborating with the restaurant chain Hooters. What a powerful image this is. From right to left, we have Shun Nakamura, the producer of Sonic Forces. Then we have Takashi Azuka himself. Next to him, we have Oyuki, the Japanese voice actress of Sticks the Badger. By the way, the three are wearing Sonic Forces t-shirts that were available for purchase at Tokyo Game Show. She's holding the arm of the iconic and universally praised Sonic mascot, and then next to him we have two Hooters representatives, who I'm sure were incredibly happy to be there. Not much was said of the promotion itself at the time, we just knew it was happening. After the reality-shifting announcement came out, they ended the presentation by showing off even more merchandise that could be purchased, and after that, the event came to a close. It wouldn't take long for more info on the promotion to be released. It was soon announced that the promotion would span three of the six Hooters locations in Japan, and that it would last from October 16th to December 10th. For decoration, the restaurants would be decked out with Sonic Forces cutout standees and posters. And, as Hooters is a restaurant, they offered a Sonic special. If you went to a participating Hooters location during 3 to 5 p.m., you could order a meal that consisted of a chili dog, some french fries and coleslaw, as well as a nice cold Sonic Blue citrus flavored drink. This meal would have been yours for only 1,180 yen, which is around $10 USD. Not too bad. The meal wasn't all you got, however. As with each order of the Sonic Special, you would receive one of four random Sonic Forces X Hooters coasters. That's right, we have tangible merchandise of this promotion. And, <laughs> yeah, I bought them. Each design showcases two characters from the game. We have one of Sonic and Classic Sonic, one of Tails and Knuckles, one of Shadow and Infinite, and one that showcases two custom heroes. And hey, look, the wolf custom hero there is red, just like in the promotional trailers, but not like on the game's key art, where the wolf is colored teal. I never understood that. It had to have been some sort of late marketing change. The trailers were probably done way before the box art was finalized, and it was decided that they should showcase a teal wolf instead. I do wonder why it was even changed in the first place though. Some people have theorized that it was because Knuckles was already a red character on the box art, but yeah, no. The box art already has two blue characters, Sonic and Sonic. I doubt they really cared about the redundancy of character colors. Anyway, the actual quality of the coasters is pretty nice. They're made of a solid material that while isn't super strong, they would definitely work well as coasters. The coasters also have some surprising details to them. For example, behind the characters are their respective side symbol. The coasters of the heroes have the star symbol, while the Shadow and Infinite coaster has Eggman symbol. That's a surprising level of detail one wouldn't expect in a Sonic the Hedgehog x Hooters coaster. To get themselves in the Sonic Forces mood, each location of Hooters was decorated in tons of Sonic Forces material. For starters, we have these great standees of various characters from the game. Sonic, Classic Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, the Wolf Custom Hero, and Infinite all came by to visit. This is all so ridiculous. Along with that, there were various posters and advertisements for the game hung up around the restaurants. That's all well and good, but the main piece that was decorating all around the restaurant was this Sonic plush. But not just any Sonic plush. Yes, each Hooters location was decorated with tons of Soap Shoes Sonic plushes. Yes, that's right, the entire existence of not only this promotion, not only Sonic Forces, but the entire Hooters brand is now all entirely justified, as it all came together to lead to us getting official images of the Soap Shoes Sonic plush at Hooters. And they had a bunch of them too, of course. You could find them strung up along railings, hanging by string, they were all over the place. For example, Here's a set of two Soap Sonics that were on display at the Blue Moon Bar, ready to serve up your tears because you don't own one. There were also some hanging out at the gift shop, including this very good man wearing a mask. Why is he wearing the mask? Well, since this promotion started in October, at the beginning, Hooters actually had all of their Halloween decorations up alongside the Forces ones. For an added bit of spookiness, a few Soap Sonics were dressed up for the occasion. 
for the record, all of these Soap Sonics are the later not for resale promotional re release of the plush. Most likely the same ones we saw at the cafe last year. Actually, here's some backstory. For those not in the know, this Soap Shoe Sonic plush originates from a 2001 UFO Catcher plush set made for the game Sonic Adventure 2. The entire set is very rare and hard to find nowadays, and many fans would do anything to get their hands on it. However, the Sonic plush in it, which is unique and desired as it is currently the only plush of Sonic wearing his special soap or high speed shoes from the game, would go on to be used at many, many promotional events. The plush was reprinted and redesigned at least three times, and is clearly still used to this day. Back in 2016, we saw the return of Soap Sonic at the Sweets Paradise Sonic Cafe promotion, where dozens of them hung and decorated the cafe. If you were to tell me a year ago that those same Soap Sonics would go on to be used to decorate Hooters locations in Japan, I'd tell you, yeah, that sounds about right. They are using plushes that people would happily pay hundreds of dollars for to get their hands on as display items at their promo cafe. Sonic X Hooters doesn't sound all that unreasonable. But you know what? I'm not entirely sure these are even the same Soap Sonic plushes. Okay, well they probably are, but these ones found at Hooters don't have their paper tags, something the ones from previous promotions had. I imagine these are the same Soap Sonic plushes they used before, which makes this actually really sad to think about. Did they really take the tags off of all of their Soap Sonics? Considering the value of this plush, that would be horrible if they did. Maybe they just got fed up with people asking if the ones at the cafe were for sale. Thinking if they remove the tags, people would understand. Yes, these very rare and desired plushes are being used as display items at Hooters, and no, you cannot have one. Cause yeah, for the record, these weren't for sale. Sure, it is a little annoying to see what is absolutely my number one most wanted piece of Sonic merchandise be used for promotion like this, but there is nothing we can really do. I do have a little bit of hope that maybe eventually they'll either re-release the Soap Sonic plush or make a new one, given the demand for it. They could easily take the current Joy Polis Sonic plush and just give it Soap Shoes. It really wouldn't be that hard, and while the original plush would still be very desired, I'm sure many fans would be satisfied with just that. And hey, it could happen. We've been seeing a good amount of Sonic Adventure merchandise come out lately, and the Soap Shoes are an unlockable shoe type for the custom hero in Sonic Forces. I wouldn't be surprised if a new Soap Shoe Sonic plush ends up being made. As a sort of send-off to the Hooters promotion, a time trial competition was held on December 10th at one of the locations. The contestants would play the stage Mortar Canyon, and would try to complete it in as little time as possible. The winning time ended up being 47.71 seconds, achieved by this guy. For his efforts, he was given a first place trophy, which unfortunately doesn't really seem to have anything too noteworthy on it. What is noteworthy though is that he was given this really amazing possibly one-of-a-kind print of this render of Sonic and Infinite, which some might recognize from this issue of Famitsu. However, it seems another special gift was also handed out. According to these tweets, the eight finalists were given, what else, Soap Shoes Sonic plushes. Just like with the Hooters ones, these guys don't have tags, so I assume Sonic Team or whoever has custody over this seemingly endless stock of Soap Sonics just took the tags off of all the ones they had and were like, oh oops. Still, that's really cool. And I'm sure more people would have entered if they knew a Soap Sonic was on the line. There is one last thing about this promotion that I have yet to mention. That's the fact that at certain times of the day, Hooters employees came out and danced to fist bump. I'm just gonna let the footage speak for itself. After December 10th, the promotion had ended. The Hooters locations took down their promo material, the Soap Sonics were removed, and Hooters once again became Sonicless. As it turns out, Hooters was not the only Sonic Forces promotion to happen in 2017. In fact, it's not even the only food-based promotion that happened. As I've mentioned before, in 2016, there were two separate pop-up cafes done for Sonic's 25th anniversary. Those were the cafes where we saw the return of Soap Shoe Sonic as a promo item by Sega. Remember, they had like, 40 of them? Well, on November 1st, 2017, it was announced that another Sweets Paradise X Sonic Cafe would be opening. And just like with Hooters, 
years, the cafe would be used as a way to promote Sonic Forces. The temporary cafe would be opened on November 3rd and closed on December 14th. Let's see what the menu offered. First off, we have Sonic's Blue Boost Curry. Yes, these all have official names. I'm a big fan of the onion rings as well as the stars. Very nice touches. Next up, we have the simply named Tails Noodles. As you can see, all of these meals have edible renders of the respective characters on each dish. That's pretty cool. Next, we have the quote, Scotch Egg of the Eggman Empire, which of course is followed up by the custom hero pancakes. The final dish you could order was none other than Infinite apricot pudding, of course. As for drinks you could order, we have classic Sonic Sonic Speed Soda, as well as Knuckles' Captain Drink. Then we have Shadow's Ultimate Drink, which must just be the end-all be-all of beverages. I love how they actually made an effort to make these look like the characters, even if it's very minor. For example, Shadow's has cherries, which represents his red highlights. Next up, while he didn't get a boss fight in the game, we have Chaos's Jelly Cider. Nice. The last two drinks they offered were based off of custom heroes. We have one based off the pink cat, and one based off the green teal bird. At the 25th anniversary cafes, each meal came with a coaster and sticker. A similar promo was given out at the Forces Cafe, where with each meal you would receive one of 16 different types of stickers. These are pretty cool. I especially like the set of character ones. Let's take a look at the cafe itself. The whole cafe, just like Hooters, was decorated with various Sonic Forces promotional material. Renders of the characters could be seen all around, as well as these posters of scenes from the game. And, of course, it wouldn't be a modern Japanese Sonic promotion without tons of Soap Shoes Sonic plushes. You could find Soap Sonics hanging around lights, tables, as well as on a Christmas tree. Yes, you are looking at a Christmas tree decorated with nothing but a bunch of Soap Shoes Sonic plushes. Yes, this plush sells for $300 on eBay. What's confusing to me, however, is that a lot of these Soap Sonics seem posed. I mean, look at this guy topping the tree. He's clearly posed. And a lot of the other ones on the tree have their arms and legs in ways that shouldn't be possible. Are these posable Soap Shoes Sonic plushes? Maybe it's just some crafty wires holding them up, but some of these poses look like they would need wires in their arms and legs, and given the lack of tags, there's a chance these are remade posable Soap Sonics, though I do sort of doubt that. No matter the case, it's pretty cool that this cafe even came back in 2017. I wonder if this cafe is going to become a yearly thing. We had it in 2016, and then again a year later. And if it's not a yearly thing, maybe with each new game release we'll see this cafe open again? And to be fair, that could go for Hooters too. Maybe this won't be the last time Sonic will appear at Hooters restaurants, for better or for worse. So, do you think the promotion was successful? Do you think anyone went to Hooters and was like, Sonic, and bought the game? Was this promotion even worth it? You know what? Yeah. I'd say so. I mean, it did allow for images of Soap Sonic at Hooters to be taken, and honestly that's really all you need to justify this. I know a lot of people would argue, oh yeah, Sonic X Hooters? What the heck, Sega? Come on. I totally understand where those people are coming from, but I don't know. I love stuff like this. Weird obscure promotions that years from now will be like, wait what? That happened? It'll be one of the many strange obscure pieces of Sonic trivia that while yes isn't very practical, it does make for a great story. I do really want to know exactly why why it happened though. I'd like to imagine it wasn't because Hooters was the only restaurant that agreed to partnering with Sonic. And hey, there's a Chuck E. Cheese x Sonic Forces promotion going on now, so clearly that's not the case. Maybe someone on staff was just a huge fan of Hooters. Whatever the reason is, I'm sure we'll never know. But whatever caused this promotion to happen, I'm very glad it did.